All right, so welcome to today's dramatic reading of old anime threads. Did you know that there were problems with anime licensing companies 20 years ago? Oh, yes, there was. Uh, this is part of a thread that is titled, let me get the title here, An Essay on How the American Anime Releasing Companies Have Screwed Up and Blown Their Chance to Make Millions by somebody named Jeffrey. Let's get into it, shall we? Anime can be successful in the American marketplace. If the anime companies were smart, we would all be seeing X at the local 20plex right now, and major titles would make 20 to 50 million dollars theatrically, and would become part of the billion dollar season of blockbuster hits on HBO the next year. But the anime releasing companies have chosen to take the safe route, aiming only at current anime fans, so that even major titles are only released on video. I'm sorry, they have chosen that. With possibly an incredibly limited theatrical release, never, never totally more than three screens total at once, and with little to no television exposure. The main arguments against anime becoming a mainstream success is in the United States are that A, it's too Asian. Foreign pop culture never works in America. B, it's originally in foreign language. The mainstream public won't watch subtitled works and dubs suck. C, only little kids watch cartoons. I challenge the first two statements with the following two words. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's movies are very ASAN and are dubbed as badly if not even worse than most anime dubs. Yet they are released on a thousand screens and make tens of millions even if the original product is seven year old movie of mediocre quality. Operation Condor. The last statement can be countered by several things. First, the release of Ghost in the Shell a very non kitty anime, was number one overall in video sales for several weeks last year, beating every Hollywood release, Disney cartoon, Barney or Power Rangers tape, and Playboy special, proving that anime can beat Hollywood in its own home turf. Secondly, there are several examples of just or mostly for adults animation on broadcast television and cable. Also, one reason why Disney productions work theatrically, while other American cartoons don't, is because Disney's films specifically aim at adults as a secondary audience. By the way, I do kind of agree with that last statement. The rights to most anime is very cheap, with $1 million being called an outrageous figure. Factor in another million to do a decent dub, the dub may still be slightly imperfect, ADR, dialogue replacement, is much harder than when you don't have to match the lips of even an animated character speaking another language. Then two to five million for marketing. Maximum total seven million dollars. If the movie makes 20 million dollars, of which the movie theaters keep, say, 30 percent, or six million dollars, then you get back 14 million dollars for a full 100 percent profit margin. 20 million is not much in the grand scheme of American theatrical releases. In fact, it would be considered a dud by most standards. It is quite possible um, for an anime to make much more than that. Here is how the anime companies can improve their lot. Get ready for this. A. Rate existing and future titles with the MPAA, even if they are just direct-to-video, and especially if they, have, if they are theatrical releases. This helps in several ways. First, it elevates the problem of a mother renting Plastic Little or Ninja Scroll or something for their little kids, being shocked at what they find, and then screaming at the retailer, who then slaps 18 and over only on all anime, even if it doesn't deserve it. I know there's a... Um, there's 
I know there's a fee involved. You may not want to rate every blue seed tape, but there's no excuse for not rating Ghost in the Shell or the Artemage movie, for example. Also, this helps get reviews on anime in mainstream media because they will sometimes go to the MPAA list of newly rated titles for a list of new titles to review. Some movie theaters won't show any unrated works. Finally, it gives an air of, legi of legitimacy to your work. You look less like a hack in mainstream eyes. Uh -huh. B. Move to Los Angeles! I mean, jeez! Manga is in Chicago, AD Vision is in Texas, Viz Video is in San Francisco, um, Central Park Media is in New York City, duh, and Amago is in North Carolina. Out of the current anime release releasers, only Pioneer is anywhere near Los Angeles, they are in Long Beach, although I think Streamline is in West Hollywood, even though they aren't releasing anime anymore. Streamline is currently working on the second heavy metal movie. This will help you get mainstream actors in your dubs, as Pioneer has done with the Armitage movie, and acquire other mainstream movie contacts, such as... Yep. C. Get a mainstream theatrical distributor, such as New Line, Fine Line, or Miramax Dimension. Dimension and New, and New Line do Jackie Chan's movies. The failure of Ghost in the Shell's self theatrical release proves that you need a Hollywood partner to make the big time in American theatrical releases. Also, getting a Hollywood partner helps in getting your stuff on both cable and broadcast television. HBO or Fox is more likely to talk to somebody from Miramax than somebody from some company in Texas they've never heard of. Prior to Rumble in the Bronx, Jackie Chan's movies, which were successful the world over, were duds in Amurkia um, due to the lack of a mainstream theatrical distributor. Not due to the quality of the movies. Rumble in the Bronx, most certainly not Jackie Chan's best work. The original fan base of Jackie Chan's movies prior to Rumble was similar, sorry, similar to, although less organized than, anime's current fan base in America. In closing, if the anime companies play their cards right, they could make millions with minimal investment. If not, well, it's their fault, not the fault of the quality of the anime.